Welcome back. It's your boy Fresh. And I'm Mary, and we are a co-op of nerds, and today is episode two of It Only Gets Better From Here. But before we begin, don't forget to give us a like, a subscribe, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Okay, so this is a series where we play through our entire board game collection, starting with the worst and working our way According towards the best. According to Board Game Geek. According to Board Game Geek. Because some of these might not be the worst for us, but they're the worst on Board Game Geek. That's right. So, uh, up first, this game we were actually, it should have been in the previous video, but we were going to do a Christmas episode about it. And then we remembered we got way too many kids, and Christmas is my busiest time at work, so... Yeah. Those plans just kind of fell apart. We got Home Alone the Game. Um, this has a ranking of 4.46, a rating. I always flip-flop those words. Yes, a rating of <laughs> rating. 4.46. Um, it's... The game itself, you... Each player controls Harry and Marv, and you're trying to find the valuables of the opposing players or your traps. And basically, you add up all the collectibles that person was that person got taken, minus all the traps they ran into, and then highest score wins. Yeah, and it's also like it ends when you find Kevin. Right. So you, you find him hiding, and then he becomes a playable character. And we, which is a, a little weird because if you're in the lead, then you want to get caught so you could lead Harry and Marv to you. Um, overall, the game I wouldn't say is very good, but the nostalgia of Home Alone and this, it's pretty cool. Like, they, they, they put a lot of things from the movie in there. Yeah, this artwork is just absolutely beautiful for a board game. Um, and even on the back, like the scoreboard, is really just Harry and Marv at the van. Um, and it just, it just looks great. I just, I, I love the look of it. Yeah. It's really, really cool looking. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a very, um, it's a low level basic game. Yeah. The, ga the game it, shows its age. Yeah. I think if they made a home loan game now, It'd be way more intricate, maybe a Euro style of building traps. <laughs> Honestly, like you could do a version of Mousetrap, but just make it Home Alone. Yeah. Yeah. That would be kind of cool. So out of 10, what do you give this? Three, four, maybe. I'll, I'll give Three it a, a four. I'll give it a four because of the artwork. Yeah. I, I think that's where I am too. So I, I think Board Game Geek's right on the money. In turn, in a fit. If he replaced the IP with a different IP, it would probably drop even further. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Up next with a 4.51. Uh, that That's going to stay in the collection, mainly for, for the nostalgia. Oh, we got... I think I forgot to say this in the beginning. We got 444 board games right now in the collection. We need to make some space. We need to make some cuts. Uh... So this also, this series gives us an opportunity to see what we really like and what we're really going to play again. We got the Oregon Trail Hunt for Food card game. So this is a cooperative game. Oh, and I won Home Alone. So 1-0 me. So Get used to me saying that. <laughs> this one is cooperative, though. This is cooperative. We both took the L on this one. <laughs> uh... So, oh man. Yeah. It's notoriously a hard game. It is a notoriously hard game. I mean, of course, it's based off the video game, which was hard. You could just yeah. randomly get dysentery in the video game <laughs> and in the board game, and you die. It doesn't matter what you did. Oh man. It, the hard part about it is, so you're, you're hunting, right? And certain animals need you to roll certain numbers on the dice. 
but every single person in your party has to roll that number. Mm -hmm. So like for squirrels, you have to roll a one. Because they're faster. Right, because they're fast. So everyone at the table has to roll a one. So that's a one in six, well, yeah, one in six chance. I think it's one or two, so two in six chance. But then everyone has to do it, so that grows exponentially. Mm -hmm. For me to get a one or two, and Mary to get a one or two, it is tough. Um, so you always, we were always trying to go after the bigger animals that were right. slower, yeah. because it was like what you could get. I think the dice have one one, one two, three th or two threes, two fours. Um, and then like the bison needed a three or four, because mm -hmm. it's big and slow, so they're easier to hit. Uh, it's neat that they're trying to do something with Oregon Trail, but that's about where it ends for yeah. me. Um, I'm. There's really not a ton of strategy to this. No, it, you're just rolling dice. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to get trapped. You can get trapped with how the cards flip over because you kind of just you land on a card and flip it over to see what what you're standing on. Uh, what, what would you rank this? Uh, probably also a four. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're being generous. I'm gonna go two. Yeah. Uh, because even the art—I mean, the artwork is supposed to look like the, the old computer game, but eh, that one's gonna leave the collection. Yeah. <laughs> Up next, our good the friends. The thing is, is they've made a lot of expansions on that one too. So. Well, yeah, that is—it's a standalone expansion. So yeah. there's the Oregon Trail, and then there's that one. Our good friends over at the Meeple Society gave us Cars Luigi's Tire Game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For George. Um, for Georgie boy. He loves cars. He loves he cars. Loves tires. <laughs> he loves tires. He loves tires. It's got these little rubber tires. And you're stacking them, and he always puts them on his wrist, and so he'll have tires going all the way up his arm. <laughs> um, Board Game Geek gives us a 4.6. What's your ranking? Um, I think okay, so that that's a really tough one. Um, like if if I'm looking at it as an overall game, it's probably like a one or a two, because there's nothing to it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm looking at it as a game for kids, it helps with dexterity and things like that. So maybe closer to like a five for kids. But for mm -hmm. us, probably a one or a two. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give it a little love because the Leaning Tower is in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll go three. Um, it's not for us, but it's not in the collection for us. It's in the collection for George. So it'll definitely stay. Yes. All right, up next, we got... Don't break the ice. Uh, this is a 4.78. Oh, I, I won Luigi's Tire Tower, by the way. No, you didn't. You won I that won one? that. Yes. Oh, yes, she did. You won that. I'm sorry. I'm going to say I won a lot. But that was the one that Mary won. This is another one that Mary won. Don't break the ice. Apparently she's way better at dexterity games than me. I'm actually horrible at dexterity <laughs> games. I'm horrible at them. Um, this, this is the classic. It, it's been around since we were kids. Yeah, but when we were kids, it was like a tissue that you put water on, and then you had to put marbles on it. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I don't know. But, it wasn't but like you're, this. You're significantly older than me, so... Mine, we, we had invented plastic at that point in time. So, um, <laughs> uh, so what, what do you rate Don't Break the Ice? A three. A three. That's probably fair. The kids used to love it. Yeah. I think they've moved on to bigger games. So this one's going to go ahead and leave the collection. We'll give this one to Goodwill. George um, just like to smash through the ice. Yeah. George would just like immediately smash all the ice, rip off the legs, and put the thing on his head. <laughs> yeah. But he hasn't done that in a long time. And I, I think part of the problem is George wants to do everything Grace wants to do, and Grace has, 
has moved on. Yes. So that one will leave. Mary won that one. Up next, Cut Four. Another classic game, been around forever. Board Game Geek has this at a 4.92. Um, but I won. Um, obviously, everyone knows Connect Four. Yeah. Uh, you're trying to get four in a row. Um, it's fine. I don't like that you have to assemble it every time and yeah. disassemble it every yeah, time you have to, because yeah. it will not fit in a box It won't otherwise. fit in the box. Oh, yeah. What, what do you rate this? A three as well. Uh, I'm going to go I'm gonna go one. Yeah, uh, it's... You could just play tic-tac-toe. You're doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Make the board a little bigger on tic-tac-toe. It's the same, same game. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if our kids were ever really no, into like that one. The they pieces. just like to play with little coins. So that one, we're going to go ahead and, and move on. Up next, we got Don't Rock the Boat. Oh, no. We're going to get out of the kids' games here in a little bit. <laughs> kind of a lot uh well the kids games are usually going to fall lower on the list yeah 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 uh so i won this one board game geek has this at a 4.94 mm -hmm. what do you rate it oh that, so this game uh i guess i forgot to say so it's got this little stand and a boat plastic boat sits on it and you have to balance these animals Penguin pirates. <laughs> Penguin pirates. Just other right. pirate related. I would items. give it a four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah, it's a good dexterity game for kids. It's fun. Yeah. I, yeah, I think four is fine. Mm -hmm. um, we're, gonna, we're gonna let that one go. Give that one to Goodwill. Um, like I said, our, our kids don't really mess with it too much anymore. Um, Make room on the show. Yep. Let's see, up next, Mary won this one. Golf Mania. So this is a 5.4 on Board Game Geek. Uh, this is a take that card game in which you are playing a round of golf and you are basically just trying to sabotage the heck out <laughs> of each other. Um, Board Game Geek has this at, I already said, 5.14. What say you? Um, I would say a probably also a four and a half. Four and a half? Yeah. It wasn't terrible. It, it wasn't terrible. I, I'm not a fan of Take That Games. I'm not either. Um, so I'm probably going to go drop it down to a three. I do like the art. Mm -hmm. Speaking of games. I can still appreciate a game even if I was. So that one's going to leave, don't rock the boat will leave, connect four will leave, don't rock the ice will leave. We got Making Christmas, so this is also 5.14, I won this one. So this is a game where you are trying to match two half of toys by sliding um, a card one, or flipping. Flip, you flip the cards or you slide I think, them? I think you're sliding them around from okay. what I remember. You have like a kind of a matrix. Right, yeah. yeah. And then certain cards have this symbol on it that lets you go, go twice and that's basically how I won. I uh, kept aiming for those. Um, it's, it's a fun little card game. Not a whole lot to it. Yeah. Uh, but us and the kids all really love Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, Jack Skellington's really popular in this house. So this one will stay, mm -hmm. but what do you rate it? This one's probably a four, just because, I mean, yes, I like the art. Um, it's a really simple game, and I mm -hmm. feel like the mechanic in it is, yes, it's a matching game, but the mechanic in it is somewhat different. Like, it's something I haven't seen before, where you have the, the grid and you have to move mm -hmm. the cards around in a specific order to make. So, you know, 
that was was kind of unique about it but again there wasn't a ton to it mm -hmm. but yeah. I, I liked it uh, that's okay. fair i'll probably go um a five i do think there's a little bit more strategy than some of these other kid games yeah um but yeah solid it's, it's nice for um for our kids as they grow in their board game that's right talents yeah up next we got break in alcatraz so this is an escape room game it doesn't even exist anymore because the sec the box literally you fold so, unfold yeah. it to as you're breaking into and out of the prison um we realize that we we suck we suck at, at these kinds of games but i think games. for those who are good at these games like people who are good at them like it was pretty neat the yeah. way they built it like yeah. you know the box is like where you start and then as the game progresses you unfold pieces of the box to kind of get into alcatraz right yeah. and then like the way that the the answers like you find the answers mm -hmm. uh, the way it's decoded and stuff which i think is super cool um all that was really neat right and i, I did appreciate that it took time to wrote I mean, it's a true story now. No one knows what happened to those guys, but um, they tried to escape Alcatraz. Uh, so I do like that they went that extra mile and, and put all that story into it. Um, I think our problem with escape room games, one of the reasons we suck at them is they take time. And <laughs> we were getting pretty tired. <laughs> we were getting tired. Our daughter was down here, just refused to leave us alone. The dogs we kept going crazy and it's like you kind of needed to like just turn off the world and really focus in on it and that kind of that's not really possible for us right <laughs> <laughs> so we did win it um i don't know if, i don't think you can lose because it, it it gives you the answers if you need them right and we you, you realize that it's a stack of cards and it's got this little red decoder like the old you look you place it on the card and it'll reveal the letters with the red tint to them so you can eventually just use that on every single one every single card which we didn't use it on every single no, we, card. Didn't, we didn't use it on every single one but uh so that one it's, it's basically it's a one-time shot i mm -hmm. you could put it back together but i was tired so i just threw it away <laughs> it was it was a it was pretty cheap yeah. Was not very expensive. Got it on clearance, so that's fine. Up next. Oh, wait a minute. Did we great? Did you give that one a number? Oh, I would give that one an eight. An eight? I would. Wow. I would. Not, maybe not for us. Just because we're not good at it doesn't mean that I don't think it's a good game. I think it's a good game. I just think we're not good at it. Okay. But people who are good at that game, like, it was really well designed. I, I'm gonna go five. I, I thought it was sort of a, a middle of the road escape room game. Um, it's, the cool part is it unfolded. The bad part is it unfolded, and then there's all these creases on the board, and like you have to intently look at this board. And Our we old missed eyes. we missed this little pipe that was perfectly on a crease, and we couldn't figure out this puzzle. And so there you go uh flock 5.22 mm -hmm. i won this one mm -hmm. so uh this is basically an area control game where you're trying to get the most birds on a particular card i think there's like six cards mm -hmm. you can do there's a way to get more birds and you gotta feed your birds and uh, was it terrible was it terrible? I, I like the art on it. The art is nice, which like, you know Tom Vassell talked about how we really like the art, but it was kind of a shame. Yeah, it's and like that, if we want a game like this, we will just play Wingspan. Right, has these awesome little food and bird meeples. Those are really cool, like yeah, the worms, the worms. And the nests mm -hmm. and all that. It's it's fine. It just it. I think it would be better. I don't think this is a, it plays great at two. I think this is probably a three to five player game mm -hmm. and we really need our games to be good at two. So I think we'll 
get rid of this one, but what's your grade on it? I'd give it a six. Six? Yeah, I don't think that it was terrible. I think there could have been more to it. Yeah. Uh, I think so. I think I'll go six as well. It. <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> and um, the expansion, little shits. So... <laughs> This is a party game that we originally played at Gen Con. Yep. So we played. So basically, um, they asked doctors, psychologists, therapists to basically rank or give a rating, a misery of. index. Yeah. That they made a TV show, a game show called Misery, misery. Index. And it's based with, off of this. With uh, the Impractical Jokers, which this is based off of. I think the new versions of the game are now called Mystery Index instead of Shit Happens. Misery Index? Misery Index. Um, so basically, like, what's worse? Uh, getting a paper cut or getting a bee sting? And they'll put a value to it. Mm -hmm. So one might be a four, one might be a four and a half. And so you're trying to chain together all these events in, you know, least bad to most bad. And... Where I think this game shines is in the, the party game. Because it, it, I don't think it has a maximum player count. As long as you got enough cards, I don't think it matters. Mm -hmm. um, and then where the where the fun of it is, is now you're now debating with your friends and family. Well, no, there's no way that's worse. I know. know? Like, and, <laughs> some of them you're like, eh, I don't know how that's worse than yeah, that. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, losing a finger or, you know, having your wallet stolen, losing your identity or something like that. It was like, some of those you're just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, the main, the base game is a 5.41. The expansion is a 5.5. Uh, I won this one as well. Uh, what do you rate these? So, that one would probably be a 6. Again, not I, I like it as a party game. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really funny. Um, I wouldn't give it higher simply because there's not much to it. Right. But I give it a six because it is a fun party game. Yep. Yeah, I was going to go seven. Um, I really enjoy it. I think it's one of the better party games that we have. One of the better party games out there. Um, just because of all the funny stories of... People start talking like, oh, I had that happen to me. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Up next. Another game I won. Bears versus babies. So in this game, you are building a army of bears to take on an unknown army of babies and they're really not bears they're different creatures yeah that, yeah i don't know why they one could be a sloth yeah I mean, one, like one could be a chicken i think it, yeah, and they're, yeah, mermaid and all yeah, sorts of crazy not, it's not really bears yeah you're, you're building all sorts of of crazy um contraptions i despise this box with the, it just does it. It takes up so much extra room when you see the <laughs> dust and stuff coming off it. Uh, we got it for clearance or on clearance. Um, Board Game Geek has this at a 5.45. What do you think? I would probably give it a five. A five, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think five is fair. I like the uh, the artwork is really fun, yep, and the concept is actually kind of fun too. Um, but yeah. It's got Take That in it. Yeah. Um, and it, it's made by the same guys that made Exploding Kittens, so it's the same kind of art style. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I do enjoy that, but it, I, I just didn't have that that hook that yeah. Exploding Kittens had. It just, and maybe it's unfair to compare it to Exploding Kittens, but. It's tough not to. It's made by the same guys. It looks exactly the same. The artwork is the same, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. We got Super Mario Brothers Power Up Game. So I won this one as well. No, you did not. 
No, you you did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won that one. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so this game, you can each round. Everyone is trying to get not the fewest amount of coins, mm -hmm. and all you can do is either trade your card with the person to your right. Um. You go around and decide. So you look at your car. I think the cars, the coins and go you don't from know, one to twelve. When you trade, you don't know. Like, and it's not like they just hold up their cards and you grab one. You don't know which one you're grabbing. Well, they only got one card. You only get one card per round. So I you, thought because they could have more than one, right? Hmm. Why did I think there was more than one? You never know what you're going to grab. You never. You don't know what you're going to grab, but they only got one yeah, card. Yeah, so it in could be hand. worse than what you have. So you're taking a risk. Right. So you you look at your card. It's either. A, a 1 to 12 value so basically if it's 6 and higher you probably don't want to trade if mm -hmm. it's under 6 you probably do um, then it goes around and the dealer can either trade with the deck or just keep their card uh, whoever has the fewest coins that round loses a life um, it is a 3 to 8 player game we kind of have a rule if it doesn't play if it doesn't play at two players, it better be phenomenal. And it's not phenomenal. And this one kind of just fell a little short. We got that one at Gen Con. Like, I think our first yeah. Gen Con. I, I, think, I think we were... I, I don't even know if we even had a board game collection at this point in time. No. When we picked this up. It was just like, oh, a Super Mario Brothers card game. Let's get it. Super Mario yeah, Brothers. We, we love Super, Super Mario Brothers so much. <clears throat> so, Board Game Geek gave this a 5.48. What are you going to give it? Probably a 4. I like the art, but um, yeah, the art is is, so -so. is the, the NES style art on the cards. Um, yeah, I I'll say a three. Was, eh. mm -hmm. Only good thing on is the art. Next, we got Key to the Kingdom. So this game is '90s as f. Yeah. Look at those guys. <laughs> Uh, so apparently some guy bought a D and D intro set, thinking it was a board game. Opened it up and it was just a bunch of rule books and stats and all that. And he's like, "Oh, that's stupid! I'm gonna build a fantasy game." And he built this. <clears throat> so basically, you're trying to get the key to the kingdom and an extra treasure, and then escape. Mm -hmm. And there's all these other challenges and. Monsters you, yeah, have you to gotta fight. fight monsters. Once and you a, fight a monster, then you get a treasure. Right. And it's a um, sort of a race mm -hmm. against all the other players, but they can steal from you if they land on your exact spot. And so how this game boils down at the very end, everyone is just trying to steal from each other. Yeah, so we're all hanging out around the Around the exit, line yeah. And trying to uh so like you're hanging out around the exit and if you don't have the key then you're trying to catch up with who you think has the key and land mm. on their spot so you can steal their cards you have to have both a piece of treasure and the key in yeah. order to win and you also have to worry about if you land on a certain spot there's the the evil guy that goes around yeah if you if he lands on your spot then you go into the dungeon and you right. have to roll your way, roll out. Your way out so the, probably this game's best known for it's so you unfold it and then if you land on a certain spot it unfolds again and you can throw people from the map yeah so or you or crush you get, them in the map you um, get into a is a whirlpool yeah into whirlpool. another world yeah yeah so that's really cool that's sort mm -hmm. of the, the gimmick of this game this game is actually pretty darn valuable um it was fun <laughs> yeah but uh, Board Game Geek rated it at a four point or five point four nine. Okay. What do you think? I would say a seven. Seven. Yeah. yeah seven yeah, sounds fair. Yeah, we had fair. fun playing it. We played it with the Meeple Society. Right. Yeah. And we all enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, they. I think it was Greg won that one. For it being an older game too, there's a lot more to it than you see in games that age. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and the artwork on this is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. It looks like some dude sat there with. A pen and markers and literally drew this board i love it um it's nostalgic for me i didn't play it as a kid but i saw it as a kid and wanted it as a kid so that one will stay and the last game 
It's blunderful. I won this one. It's kind of like how well you know people. Right. So that you're playing with. Yeah. The deal goes around and someone reads a card and then there's, you know, you crap your pants. What do you do? Make a joke out of it. Throw your pants in the trash or run away as fast as possible. Yeah, like and you have to bet what you think they're going to pick and you can you wage your points mm -hmm. and whoever gets to i don't know if it's 50 points or whatever it was maybe 100 uh you win mm -hmm. um it's so fun it, it's, it's fun it's, and it's, it's fun. funny it's fun it's funny but there there does feel like there's like a lot of games like this that are out there already right. yeah yeah how well do you know someone is a very common yeah and that's I, a common party thing right which i'm not a big fan of in party games because I mean at a party I probably don't know you know <laughs> two or three people there or it's kind of a boring party so me betting on what they're gonna pick is like eh, or you know them from work or know them from them being your grandma and you don't want to know what she's gonna do if she craps her pants and <laughs> You don't want to think I about it. I doubt if our grandmothers were here, we would ever play this with them. <laughs> Probably not. But I I think so Board Game Geek gave this a five and a half. What do you think? I give it a five. I give it a five because it's funny. And it's an okay party game. I uh, I'm gonna bump it down to a four. Um yeah, for all the reasons I just said. Mm -hmm. So that one's gonna leave the collection. I, I just think if given the average party, I'd much rather play was it shit happens yeah <laughs> that's just funner it is all right and that'll do it so the game stain or home alone luigi's tire tower making christmas shit happens and key to the kingdom all the rest are bye-bye and the rest are gone make some space yeah we got games stacked up over here so we huddle up we're gonna be like this. That just keep growing up. Build a fort around us. And once again, I won the week. Do you ever think you'll get this crown? I don't want it. <laughs> All right. Let us know down in the comments if you've played any of these um, and what you think of them. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey, Pumpkin. Yes? We went bowling today. Yes. Do you remember who won? You are not a very gracious winner. <laughs> Do you remember who came in last place? Was it the five or three-year-old? No, it was me. <laughs> the five and the three-year-old don't have arthritis in their wrists. <sighs> Feels good to be king.